to the saddle of pulling the rain, riding the trails and the wide open plains, out where the skies kiss the mountains, out where old pals never change. And when I get home, never more will I roast, but I want to go back on the range. Whoa, I'm going home! Hey, Tex, don't be a chump. What do you mean, chump? You'll be a chump if you go back to Texas and play nursemaid to a couple of cows. Listen, kid, you're a sensation. What do you want to go back there for? There's plenty of dough to be made here in professional football. Well, Butch, I'm homesick. And when a man is homesick for Texas, he's got something to be homesick about. Ah, uh, even so, I still think you're crazy. Maybe so, but you might be wrong. Boy, I felt halfway home when I dug these old clothes out of the trunk. Hey, you mugs, come here. All of you. Say, when the season is all over, how about you all coming down and paying me a visit? That's a good oh, idea. Well, we only got two more games. Right. Well, well, go down, Tex. Okay, pal. Hey, Tex. Can I see you a minute? Certainly, Spud. What is it? Well, Tex, I've had an idea for a long time. Why, Spud? I've never suspected you had an idea. Oh, I'm next kid, and I'm serious. I got a yen to be a cowboy. You what? Well, why not? Do you think you're the only guy who can be crazy about the open range and all that junk? Say, listen, I've been watching them guys in the movies, and I know I could do that stuff. Well, what am I supposed to do about it? Well, I was thinking uh, I could trail along with you, and you know the ropes. You could show me the way to get around, you know. Spud boy, I don't think you know what you're asking for. You'd better stick it out here. <laughs> what Texas? <laughs> what What's up? Spud, what's the idea? Spud wants to be a cow puncher. <laughs> You know, he's gone to night school at the movies, he's learned all about being a cowboy. And now he wants to ride him high, wide, and handsome with a loud whoopee! <laughs> get that! Let's get him! Oh, I get the black boy! Hey, get the black boy! 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 Well, how are you making out? I've got blisters where I've never had blisters before. Ah, keep your chin up. It ain't my chin that's bothering me. That horse trader sold me a rock crusher instead of a cayuse. <laughs> Say, listen to that. This ain't the 4th of July and the folks down here don't burn powder just for fun. Come on, let's take a look. like I got here in just about the right time. Yeah. Reckon I owe you a debt of gratitude whether I like it or not. Well, then, what quarrel have you got with me? I got a quarrel with anyone by the name of Fletcher. You've either said too much or not enough. Go on. Texas used to be a peaceful, law-abiding country. And my father made it that way. I ain't saying it so. But a while back, we begin to be overrun by all the gun-toting riffraff along the border. 
They kept a crowding in the air like a swarm of grasshoppers. And we looked to Tom Fletcher to clean things up. Naturally. Well, we asked your father to come to a meeting to organize the ranchers to wipe out that nest of rattlesnakes. But he never showed up. Why not? You can't ask a man who's disappeared. Disappeared? What do you mean? Well, that ain't hard to figure out. Either he was afraid or... Or what? Or in cahoots with that gang. How could you think that? You won't find anyone around here who thinks different. They will before I'm through. If my dad disappeared, it wasn't of his own free will. You know, that looked easy when I seen it done in the movies. Hey, what was all the shooting about? Well, the fight's all over, Spud. All over? So quick? When we throw lead down here, we mean business. Lem, if you want to lift to your ranch, climb on with Spud. Thanks. Gee, I never thought it would be like this when I got home. It's a nasty slap in the face, Tex. I'm sorry. I know you are, Spud. Come on, I'll show you where you'll flop. Flop nothing. I'll just ease down. I've heard of razorback hogs, but I've never heard of razorback horses. something that he thought was in this room. Yeah, and if I only had brains instead of sawdust in my noggin, we might have grabbed him. I'll well, stop kicking yourself around, Spud. Hey, Tex, you've got blood on your hand. Say, I must have hit one of them. I say you did. Whoever was searching this house could give me the answer to my father's disappearance. We're gonna walk the chalk line. We're gonna have law and order around here. Now that Sheriff Fletcher's hightailed it with all that he could get. Sheriff oh, Fletcher was a bad guy. He was a great guy. Sheriff Fletcher wasn't running any bluff. He had enough evidence on smuggling to call in the government for help. I searched all over the place. I couldn't find a thing. Then a couple of ranches butted in on me and I had to...
walking one morning for pleasure, a spidey young cowboy loping along. His hat was thrown back, his fur was jingling. As he come near me, he was in a song. Oh, hi, a yogi, long little doggy, joy of misfortune and none of my own. Wyoming will be your new home. All that they eat is the mesquite and shoya. Now they're a trailing to Idaho. We'll be high, a yogi, long little doggy, and know that Wyoming will be your new home. Stranger around here, ain't you? Yeah, is there a law against a fellow being a stranger? Now, don't be so smart, Alec. It's my business to check up on strangers. Why are you here? Well, a fellow's got to be someplace, and this happens to be the place. Some other time, some other place. That tells a story. Just a drifter. That's right. What's the idea of trying to steal my show? You didn't mind, did you? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Say, so who is that fellow? Oh, just a drifter. Chances are he'll be gone tomorrow. Let's be right. in another bunch of stuff from across the line. Hey, Jim, I ain't supposed to know about what's going on. Oh, shut up. Who's going to ask you if you know anything or not? Have any trouble? Well, it's not my idea of having a good time. A trip across the desert is murder. How about a drink? Hey, buddy, what happened to your eye? Run into a door? Who wants to know? John. Let's get away from here. Now, don't start that again. But, Don, I'm afraid of this place, and I don't want you mixed up in this crowd. You're the only brother I have, and I've got to look after you. Get that idea out of your head. I'm not a baby, and no one has to look after me. Cut out the double talk and let me in on it now. What happened? Well, I stopped at the cantina and ran into a man with a patch over his eye. That must be the guy you shot. Spud, we've got to be smart. And the best way to outsmart the other fellows to make them think that you're not smart. Oh, that last point will be a cinch for me. You drift into town tomorrow. Don't act as if you know me, no matter what happens. It's brains against beef until we can spring the fireworks in the last quarter. There's a pair of these guns exactly alike. My father gave me one, he carried the other. And this one has a message for the man who was responsible for whatever happened to him. Partners. What are you waiting for, sucker? Hey, boys, get 
Get a load of that. <laughs> Howdy, partners. You mind if I join you? No, not at all. Not at all. Sit right here. Just a minute till we dust this off. We don't want to get those clothes all dusty. Uh, there's plenty more where they come from. And I got the note of iron, too. Hey, you. Where's your license? What license? License to run a medicine show. I ain't got no medicine. I oh, ain't got no medicine show and I'm spilling nothing to no lawman. Mm -hmm. I'll bet you were a hard riding hombre back in New Jersey. Where's Jim Davis? Over in his office. Look, you. We've got a nice quiet town here. Don't go leading these boys astray. Wise cracker, huh? I'll show that mug a few tricks ain't even in the book. I bet you will. You tell him I will. You talk as if you're pretty well healed. Want to play a little card? Sure, I'll give you a piece of oil. All right, deal them up. Why can't I pull out if I want to? Because I need you on the other side of the border. And don't you dare try to double-cross me unless you want to hang for murder. I didn't kill Sheriff Fletcher. I know I was drunk, but I wouldn't do it. Hello, Joe. Come on in. Don's been trying to tell me he didn't pump any letting to Sheriff Fletcher. <laughs> well, of course he did. Me and you both saw him. And you rode across the border dressed in his clothes. But don't you worry. I never cause a friend of mine any trouble. What did you want? Well, Jim, I wish you'd hold the boys down a bit. Say, they're running hog wild rustling on this side of the line. But what if they are? Well, it puts me in a bad light. <laughs> Say, don't tell me you take that job serious. You know, I pinned that badge on you so that no one could squawk that the law wasn't being duly represented in this county. Now, we're all in a swell spot and we'll all clean up big. I want you to have the boys go out and ride those ranches hard. Drive them out. Keep them so busy worrying about their own hides that they won't have a chance to worry about our business. Tom Fletcher was the only man who could have organized the opposition against us. And he's been patted in the face with a shovel. Suppose the rangers come in. They won't send them unless you ask for them. That's why you're a sheriff. Now, there's a lot of stuff waiting for us on the other side of the border. And here's the money to pay for it. Get going. I don't want to be seen any other games. This suits me fine. Go ahead and deal. Hey, come on, shuffle them. I'm going across the line. You two fellas saddle up some horses and meet me out the corral. Well, I'm glad you're going instead of me. I don't care about frying my hide across that desert. Hey, what do you keep Don Harper hanging around for? Someday he's going to kick over the traces and get us all in a jam. Because I need his connections on the other side of the line. And he'll be a good boy as long as he believes he killed Sheriff Fletcher. I still think it's a mistake to take a chance on him. You sure you ain't holding on to him on account of his sister? Why, you... Someday you're going to talk yourself into a lot of trouble. I'm all out of breath from trying to catch up with you. Where are you going? I've got a little business trip to make. I'm going with you. No, you're not. Why can't I ever go with you on any of these mysterious business trips? And why don't you ever tell me anything about them? There's no reason for you to get so upset. Forget it. I'll be back in a couple of days.
Why not? Well, I didn't think that you'd be... That is, I thought of you only as a singer, not a horseman. Though well, some singers should be horsemen only. <laughs> Have you anything very important to do? No, not right now. Uh, I'm kind of afraid of this horse. Would you ride back to town with me? Well, I'd be glad to. It was awfully nice of you to rescue me, and I... Uh... Listen, Romeo, you're kind of stepping out of your class. Now, you better watch yourself, or you might get your ears slapped down. Come on, Jean. I was looking for you. Well, I thought you were sliding for second base. Oh, next kid, and I got important news. Well, what is it? I heard they're gonna raid the Baker Ranch right away. Are you sure? That's the way I dope their signals. Okay, we run interference with Baker. and don't spare the land. Right. That'll be a cinch. Take care of them for a while, boys. Come on, let's head back. Well, boys, those hombres aren't so tough. All they needed was a little opposition. You know, son, this is just like old times when your dad was around. Why, he... Yes, I guess that's right. But this is only the start of what I'm going to do. I'll break up their teamwork by making them suspect each other.
Say, do you always get off a horse that away? No, only when I dismount. Is the war over? It's all over, Spud. Oh, doggone. It looks like I never will get in one of these fights. Now, you just be patient. Maybe one will come your way sometime. <laughs> well, I guess I better be going. I want to get to town before that gang gets there. I'll get in touch with you later. All right, son. Some of the boys won't be back. What does this mean? You had a perfect setup. What went wrong this time? Well, your guess is as good as mine. They sure had a reception committee waiting for us. The beggar had his cattle all rounded up. You might have expected a raid and called in a few neighbors. A few neighbors? It was a convention. Well, we've got to put a stop to it. We can't let that crowd get organized. We've got to find out who's pulling them together or we're licked. you don't. They've been outsmarting you lately. They seem to know what you're going to do before you do. Well, I can't keep that up all the time. Whoever's leading those rises will overreach himself. Then we'll have a nice, quiet funeral. Excuse me, ma'am. You seem to be in some kind of trouble. Is there anything I can do to help? Oh, no, really. There isn't anything you can do. This fellow bothering you? Oh, no, not at all. Uh, I want you to meet Mr... Jones. Johnny Jones. Mr. Jones, this is my brother, Don Hopper. Your brother? Yes, and I don't know why, but I'm very fond of him. You'll have to excuse me now. Well, it's been awfully nice to meet you. waiting for you at Baker's. I'll be there in a little while. I've got to talk to someone. There's a cabin in the valley, in the valley of my dreams. And there's love light shining round the cabin door. There's a stream Inside the cabin in the valley of my dreams And there's welcome on the mat that's on the floor At night the whippoorwill is softly singing 
And that's where I want to be forevermore There's a cabin in the valley, in the valley of my dreams And there's love light shining round the cabin door Don't come up here. Please go away. You mustn't try to see me. There's nothing to be afraid of. I'll only be a minute. I can't explain now, but I want you to get your brother out of town tomorrow and keep him with you. What's wrong? Now, don't worry. Just leave everything to me. Would you mind returning that, please? Oh, surely. We've seen this boy in action. And I think we owe him an apology for the things we've been thinking and, yes, and saying about his dad. You're right, Lem. He's done a mighty good job in helping us. And I'm backing any move he wants to make. Well, I'm working to break up that gang in order to find out what happened to Tom Fletcher. And we've got him worried right now. It's up to us to carry the fight to them. You tell us what you want, and we'll ride according to orders. Well, our first move, boys, is to force that sheriff to turn his badge over to us. We need the law on our side to do the job right. Oh, yes, sir, that's true. I want you to get all your men together tomorrow and pay him a surprise visit. He'll fold up when it comes to a showdown. He's scared right now. Where'll we meet you? I won't be in on that play, Lim. I could be of more help to you by staying undercover. I think you're right. Come in. You know, you've been acting kind of funny lately. Anything been wrong? Oh, I don't know. I guess I'm just tired. You know, you're foolish to go on working like this. Don't you think it's about time you gave me the answer I want? I've been pretty patient. No, I can't marry you. You see, I don't like it here. Well, we don't have to live here. Well, we can live anywhere you say. I'm sorry. Please let's not talk about it anymore. Well, if you could see things my way, you'd be doing your brother a big favor. In what way? Why don't you ask him? Plinking on his guitar. Well? His name is Fletcher. He's the answer to all our trouble. How do you know? I trailed him tonight. I've got a lot to tell you. I'll go in my office. Bart, come along. Well, let's have it. They had a meeting tonight at the Baker Ranch. They've cooked up a big surprise for us. Well, he shouldn't be hard to stop. 
Bart, pay him a little visit. Right. Don, what's the matter? Nothing. Yes, there is. You're as nervous as a cat. Don, be fair to me. Whatever the trouble is, we're in it together. You've got to tell me what it is. Why are you afraid of Jim Davis? He knows that I killed Sheriff Fletcher. Don. I was drunk. Honest, Gene, I don't remember a thing about it. I, I know that I went with him to see him and there was a fight and... Well, they say that I shot him. Oh, Don, I can't believe that you'd do that. I don't know what to believe. I had this when I woke up next morning. That's Sheriff Fletcher's gun. I don't know why I don't get rid of it, but I can't. The thing has a hold on me. Jim Davis knows this, and so does the sheriff. And now, to protect myself, I've sent another man to his death. and killed you. Say, that fellow's dynamite with a gun. Yeah? I'll show you how to handle dynamite. Give me the sheriff's office. Hello, Joe. Jim. Say, I want you to go over to Sheriff Fletcher's house. Just a minute, Fletcher. I'm arresting you for murder. You're wrong, Sheriff. I shot in self-defense. Yeah. That's what they all say. Get going. Songbird all cooped up. Good. You better go over. Keep your eye on them. I'll come over later. Right. with this? Why not? So you thought you could come in here and outsmart me? The way things have been going, it looks like someone outsmarted you. It's a finish that counts. And don't expect your friends today. They'll be delayed. When the boys get through taking care of them, we're going to give you a trial and hang you. Well, of course, everything's going to be done strictly according to law. You'll be the second Fletcher I've sent to the happy hunting ground. So you're the man I want. Yeah, I, I thought you'd like to know that before you checked out. It'll make you going just a little bit tougher. Hey, you shouldn't have said that. Why, he's never going to get a chance to tell what I said. What do you want? Well, I figured that fellow you got in jail there might like his music box. 
Must get kind of lonesome in there if all alone. All right, let him have it. Yeah, and tell him I'd sure like to hear him sing a piece sometime. Well, I guess I'll be going now. I'm going over to the cantina. Keep your eye on that bird. the time with us if you like. If you're gonna sing, I'll leave that door open. I like to hear good music. All right, Sheriff, I'll do the best I can. And it better be good. I stepped into a town in Texas And they had in mind of doing wrong I looked around and saw the county sheriff And he drew his gun and said, now come along He said I was a horse thief and a bandit That rustled doggies from the old barracks he took me into court to get my sentence And the verdict was that they would stretch my neck They won't stretch my neck if I know it Won't be long now before I'll be free I've been hanging around many places But you'll never find me hanging from a tree Sent a letter to my gal in old Wyoming Said, honey, won't you help me make a break? She made a cake and in it put a hatchet But forgot the dynamite to break the cake I sent money for a gun across the border To a gal that used to be my boy. But the only thing that gun would for she thought that I was just a little boy They won't stretch my neck if I know it There'll be no necktie party, you see For I ain't gonna hang in this prison And there'll never be a lily pinned on me better not come with me. Yeah, but uh, I got something to tell you. Tell me later. I know, but it's important. I... Come on. Fletcher's escaped. Fletcher? 
The man you know is Johnny Jones. I'm glad. Glad? If they don't get him, he'll kill me. He said so. His life or mine? Davis is the man I want, not you. Davis? Yeah. He killed my father and bragged about it. And all this time they made me think that I did it. Around here. Some of you stay out here and watch for him. The rest of you come with me. Dad's gun. I'll make good use of this. Fletcher's in this building someplace. They must be upstairs. Don, where are you going? Get back. I know who killed Sheriff Fletcher, and I'll show you. Take him into the other room.
like to see Tex. Oh, boys, he wants to see Tex. <laughs> the cabin in the valley of my dreams and there's welcome on the mattress on the floor at night the whipper will is softly singing and that's where i want to be forever and in the valley in the valley of my dreams and there's shining round door we've had in a long time. Find out how the boys are getting along. Oh, Mac, take a look and see how the boys are. Tell me they've been fired. No, they're just away on a vacation. All right, brother, hand over the package. I have strict orders to deliver this package to either George or Harry, personally. Well, how are you going to deliver it to them? They're away hunting or fishing. Come on, hand over the package. Quit stalling. Nothing doing. I'll take that. Come on, get in here. I tell you, I don't know anything about it. 
you fool. The gang ran out on you, now you're trying to cover up for them. Why don't you come clean? You a detective? Why ask me? I'm telling you once more, this isn't a rap for robbery. It's murder. I know. You've been telling me that right along, but you can't pin it on me. I didn't do it. I didn't even have a gun. That's what you say, but we know different. Don't we, Chief? Well, we've got the statement from that messenger saying that he saw him fire the shot. No, there's no use wasting any more time with him. He wants the rope, let him have it. I didn't do it, I tell you, I didn't do it. I didn't know there was going to be any killing. When they put that black cap over his head and start adjusting that noose, put that out back of his left ear, then lead him out onto the trap, he'll wish then he got. I'm going to give you one more chance. Who are they? I don't know their names. I'd tell you if I knew. I never seen the guys before. But you know where they went. You knew the arrangements for the getaway. Where'd they go? Come to think of it, Magpie, they don't hang in this state anymore, do they? It's the lethal chamber. Yeah. But I'd rather have the wrong gas is bad. I don't blame you. Hanging's a sweet death compared to gas. First you start gasping for breath. Then paralysis starts creeping over you. Starts at your feet, grows up to your knees, then travels like a searing flame till it numbs your brain. You know what it's like to take that walk down the long corridor to that small door that leads to the finish? You count every tick of the clock, every measured tread, knowing you're walking that last long mile. Stop it! Stop it! I'll tell. I'll tell. Where'd they go? We were going to meet in Edgetown. Down on the border. What are the names of these fellows? I don't know their names. I swear I don't. All right. Take them away. I'd appreciate it if you fellows would keep this confession out of the papers for a while. Well, what's the next move, boss? A trip to Edgetown. fisherman and he landed here. If it hadn't been for him, we wouldn't have known about the diamonds. Yeah, but what good will the diamonds do us if Carson gets after us? Oh, what are you squawking about? He ain't here yet, is he? Well, I'm not gonna be here when he does show up. That's an idea, boss. Yeah, but not a good one. Might not be good, but it's better than having a noose around your neck. Listen, boss. Carson will break Joe just as sure as we're standing here. And I'm not waiting until he does. Yeah, that goes for me, too. Fine bunch of gunmen you are. Now, one of us knows the guy. If the minute his name is mentioned, you all want to hightail it out of here. Now, listen. If he gets within 50 yards of this place, we'll blast him. Yeah. Now, does anybody else want to leave? Things of his love as he strums her There's a song at the end of the trail. And when roundup time is drawing 
night, a cowboy sings a lullaby. Job and I'll, I'll pay you back on it, Bill. We'll get together on it. Nah, go on, get out of here. teach you not to be so smart. Just a minute. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Yeah? What's it your business? Well, I'm making it my business. for me and why? No. Scotch. federal men and get away with it. Let's pack up and get out of here before Carson arrives. So you're chiming in with the rest of them, eh? I thought you had some nerve. What's a copper ever done for you? Well, this one has done plenty. He got me out on probation. And right now, I'm a free woman because of him. Oh, Jim, let's get out of here before it's too late. I'm not running away from any man. I've got a good business here and I'm staying. Now get out there and sing your song.
light up the way The cowboys are through for the day And this yearning heart explains The lure of the moon on the plain Tell that man over there I want to see him in my dressing room. Yes, ma'am. Did you like that song, old man? You bet I did. And when she is singing that about your own heart, I'm thinking of my girl. You don't mean to tell me you've got a girl? Sure, I got a girl. She's just as good looking as I am. Pardon me, sir. The entertainer would like to see you up in her dressing room. Thank you. Help yourself to a drink, old man. I'll be back in a minute. that I owe my freedom to you. And I've always wanted a chance to repay you. Well, let's not talk about that. Do you know your life is in danger? It always is in my business. Yes, I know. But your life is in greater danger here than anywhere else. There's a crowd here out to get you. And they'll stop at nothing. Who are they? I can't tell you that. Well, you don't have to. They're really after me. They've come out from cover before long. I don't know why they should be. I'm not down here after any in particular, that is no white man. All I'm looking for is a Chinaman, a Eurasian who poses as a highly educated Chinaman. He's a well-known fence, deals in diamonds, precious jewels, stones, and so forth. You haven't seen anyone answering that description around here, have you? No. What makes you think you'll find him here? It's common sense and reasoning. This is a natural spot for anyone who wants to smuggle valuables out of the country. By the way, what are you doing down here? The last I heard of you, you were singing in the big town. I was, but they made it too unpleasant for me. I'm sure you're waiting your time here, Captain Carson. And the longer you stay, the greater the danger. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to stay a little while longer. I'm sorry you won't take my warning. But I'll do everything I can to avoid trouble. Fine of you, Mitch. Now, you've been nice enough to give me a warning. Let me give you a piece of advice. Get away from here and go back where you came from. I'll see they don't bother you. That's impossible. Carson's here. Where? Up in Midge's room. How do you know? I heard him talking to her. Well, you know. Better let me go first. you introduce us to Captain Carson? Well, I was just coming in to tell you about him. Oh, yeah? That's what you said. Shut up, you. All right, what about us? Oh, we've nothing to worry about. He's not after us. He's looking for a Chinaman who smuggles precious gems. What sort of sense? Yeah, I don't believe it. He's trying to pull a wool over your eyes, Midge. He's here to get us, but we're beating him to it. 
Listen, boys, all of you. If he should disappear, we'll have the whole federal force down on us. Lay low for a week or two. I'll try to convince him the Chinaman he's looking for is in some other part of the country. Now maybe you can and maybe you can. But we're not taking any chances. Come on, boys. What are you going to do? Get rid of him. What do you think? That's him, out there at that table. Huh? Yeah. You go on out the back and cover him from the balcony. Right. You stay here and keep out of trouble. Come on, fellas. Time you try anything like that, somebody's going to get hurt. If I were after any of you fellas, I've got enough on most of you to send you up for a long time. But I'm too busy just now to be interested in small fry. She's a fidgety. Oh, I'm just nervous. About Carson? Yes, if you must know. If he gets away, it's all up with us. The quicker we pack and get out, the better. Now, don't you worry. The boys have probably got him by now. Well, boss, our worries are all over. Good. Did you have much trouble getting him? We didn't get him. Let the dope here tell you about it. We caught him this morning near the rocks riding Carson's horse. Yeah? I'll spill it. Well, I didn't kill him. Last night after you forced me to go with him, it was right along the river bottom. Somebody jumped off from behind one of the rocks and took a shot at him. I just did get away. Who was it? I don't know. Looked like a Chinaman. Chinaman? 
Why, that must be the Chinaman he was looking for. Yeah. And then what? Well, I snuck back and I saw him pick him up in his arms and throw him across his horse and ride away with him. So I got Carson's horse and headed towards town, but the boys here picked me up. You can't arrest me for it because I didn't kill him. Oh, we know you didn't do it. Don't we, boys? We know he didn't kill him. Don't you worry. Take him out, boys, and buy him a drink. Oh, thanks. Come on. Come on, Dobby. Well, I guess he was looking for a Chinaman. What are you going to do about that dope? He's been hanging around here for a week, mooching drinks. Ah, leave him alone. He's not hurting anyone. Say, you know that old Hanover mansion? Yeah. It's been empty for a long time. What about it? Uh, it's no longer empty. It's been turned into an oriental shop. Not a cheap joint, either. It looks swell, just like a big city place, run by a Chinaman. Did you say a Chinaman? That's what I said, boss. And not one of those washy-washy Chinamen, either. This guy dresses like a white man and looks plenty smart. I wonder who he is. We'd better find out. Hey, foolish. Come here. Yeah, you call me? Yeah. Do you know the old Hanover Mansion? Oh, yeah. Well, go snoop around over there and see what you can find out. If I find out anything, shall I let you know? Of course, you dope. Now talking to Mr. Sam Sung, dealer in Chinese antiques and jewelry. Think I can get away with it, Mike Pye? Get away with it? Why, you look as much Chinese as any Chinaman I ever saw. Have you heard anything in town about this establishment? Oh, plenty. Everybody's wondering what it's all about. Well, up to now they haven't seen me, so... I suppose this is a good time for Sam Sung to make an entrance, eh? Well, you get down to the Lafayette and wait there for me. You know what to do. All right, Chief. I can do for you? I'm the proprietor here. Oh, thank you. I'm honored. I, too, am a proprietor in a small sort of way. I have just opened a place of business in your town. Is that so? What kind of business, Mr. Uh... Sam Stung is the name. A dealer in rare antiques, precious stones, or any other article of value. Where do you expect to find precious stones around this neck of the woods? Is not your town situated on the border? It is only in towns along the border that one is apt to find individuals who have articles offering for sale that may not be offered in other localities. In what way may I help you? You might assist me in the procuring of a suitable servant for my establishment, or someone who do the work about the place, but with sufficient brains to take orders, but not too many brains, do you understand? I got it. I think I know just the man for you, too. Hey, pull it! Did you send for me, Mr. Wilson? Yeah, Mr. Sung here has a job for you. This is the man I was telling you about. You better tell him his duties. Oh. Uh, you understand janitor work and keeping a place clean, I presume? Yes, sir. And uh, the customers, ladies and gentlemen, coming to our place of business, you would be able to treat uh, courteously? Oh, yes, if I had to. Uh, very well, then, uh, on the recommendation of Mr. Wilson, I will uh, take you into my service. You may wait outside. Thank you.
Thank you. Someday I may be able to return a favor. Say, Mr. Son, do you think it's wise to open a place of business here with the police after you? And what do you know of my business? Oh, it's all right with me. But I happen to know there's a Captain William Carson, federal officer, looking for you. Unfortunately for Captain Carson, he found me. Well, what do you mean? Those who have passed on to their ancestors cannot molest further anyone on this earth. Say, hey, come on over and meet the boys. Boys, this is Mr. Sun. He just informed me that Captain William Carson is no more. Well, say, that calls for a little celebration. It sure does. Will you spit a bottle of wine with us, Mr. Sun? Uh, thank you. At another time. Just now, I think I should return to my establishment and give my new servant some instruction in his duties. You will excuse me, please. Good day. Good day. Say, with Carson out of the way, why don't we get to the stones? Oh, we can't. Not till Luke gets here. How long before he gets here? Any day now. Why do we have to wait for him? Can't we do it some other way? What would you suggest? How about that Chinaman? I'll bet he'll handle hot stuff. He might at that. Do you want to tackle him? No, not me. Let Mitch do it. How about it, Mitch? Well, I could try. See what you can get on those. But don't let him know they're any more in town. Just let him understand that you can get your hands on some. All right. How do you do? I'd like to see Mr. Sung. Yes, ma'am. You uh, wish to see me? You're Mr. Sung? I am. Will you please sit down? You are the lady who entertains at the Lafayette, are you not? Yes, I am. And to what do I owe the honor of your visit to my humble establishment? Well, you're a dealer in rare objects. And uh, I was curious to know whether you would be interested in buying some precious gems. I might be interested in the purchase of these gems if they were of sufficient quality. Have you them with you? Yes, I have. You speak very good English. Ah, but you see, I was born in China, but educated in San Francisco. You are thinking, perhaps, of the dialect, which was very funny, too, used by the early Chinese who came to this country. But most of that has gone out with education, even in China. But all of that has been changed since the Chinese Revolution. At the time, the Chinese lost their cues to make an American witticism at that time of the revolution, not only many of the Chinese lost their cues, but also lost their heads. This is a very, very clear gem, exceptional quality, but would require additional cutting to make it marketable at the present time. And. Uh, You are interested in that shrine? Why, why yes. But why should you have his personal things enshrined? 
we Chinese worship not only our ancestors, but also honor and enshrine the memory of a brave enemy. You say a brave enemy? Then it was you whom Captain Carson was seeking? That was my honor. And although I very much regret the passing of Captain Carson, I also rejoice in it because it leaves me free to conduct my business. I will give you $2,000 for those stones. But they're worth a great deal more. Assuredly. They are worth perhaps three times that amount. But to whom else could you sell them? You know, our very benevolent Uncle Samuel keeps a very sharp eye on the border. I'll take it. You show great wisdom. And if you have any more such gems, I would uh, consider their purchase. No, I haven't. But I know someone that has. Then if you will recommend them to me, I will deem myself greatly in your debt. Good day. Well, the trail's getting hot, Chief. Only warm, my dear Magpie, warm. It's got to get a lot hotter than this before we can clamp down on them. Well, a little trip to the Lafayette, do a little gambling. Might raise the temperature a little bit. Say, that's not a bad idea. Chinamen are supposed to be good gamblers anyway. Tonight, my friend, we go to the Lafayette to woo the goddess of fortune. I wish you'd quit quoting them high and tooting words, Chief. All in good time, my boy, all in good time. Get a load of that. And look what he did to Foolish. Good evening. Well, how do you find your new servant? He has slight possibilities. Well, uh, what can I do for you tonight? I have come to woo the goddess of chance. Fine. We're just starting a little poker game over here. Would you like to join us? I am particularly fond of your American game of poker, but I should like liberal players. Any special limits? From the lowest regions of Satan to the highest of the seventh heaven. Meaning the sky is the limit. As you so aptly put it. Fine. Boys, is it all right if Mr. Sung joins us? Well, certainly. Sit right in. Thank you, no. gentlemen. Well, what'll it be? My favorite game is draw poker. Heal him out.
I will see that and raise an equal amount. Sorry, I can't stand the raise. I will merely call. Full house. Ace is over queen. That is a very good hand, but I am very much afraid it is not good enough. I have four kings. Gentlemen, do you wish to continue to play the game further? With what? I'm broke. Me too, I'm through. I'm clean too. Then in that case, may I thank you for a very entertaining and profitable evening. Good night. hundred thousand dollars in ice and not a dime in cash. Yeah, what are we gonna do about some dough? I wonder if our friend Mr. Sun would go for the rest of those rocks. Say, Mitch said he might. I'll pay Mr. Sun a visit in the morning. Why'd you take him to such a clean board, Chief? I thought you want to get friendly with them. <laughs> I do, but you see, they're convinced now this gentleman's a pretty smart fellow. Furthermore, the sooner they go broke, the quicker they're going to try to peddle these jewels. Oh. This little section tonight's going to help them right along the way. You don't think we got wise to me, do you? Not a chance. Why, you could start a Chinese laundry here and it would get wise <laughs> to you. What's the next move, Chief? Uh, next move will be coming from certain gentlemen who are wishing to peddle certain jewels to unsuspecting Chinamen. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> These gems are a first quality. Have you any more like them? No, I haven't, but I know where I can get many more. All perfect gems. And could you bring them to me here for examination? No, the man that has them is across the border. But he'll sell if you don't ask too many questions. Huh. The great Confucius has said, to hear much speak very little. Silence is a friend who never betrays one. You may tell your friend I am a true follower of Confucius. How many of these uh, are you ready to buy? Whatever amount your friend wishes to dispose of. Can you raise a hundred thousand dollars? a great amount of money. It would require 24 hours notice for me to have that amount in American currency. My friend will meet you at the border. He's willing to bring him that far. That is satisfactory. I would meet him at any place you designate. He'll have an armed guard with him. Well, assuredly. Only shows the wisdom of your friend. By the way, do you mind if I bring the young lady from whom you bought the other two diamonds? Oh, certainly not. I should deem it an honor to meet the young lady again. Then it's a deal. Day after tomorrow at sunrise. Ah, my friend, you Occidentals, you jump to conclusions very rapidly. Too rapidly sometimes. You say, it is a deal like that. It is only a deal after I have thoroughly examined the gems. Oh, naturally, naturally, you'll have that privilege. Thank you. You will show the gentleman to the door, please. Well, see you later. Well, we're doing all right, Magpie. Yeah, but I don't like it. When do I get rid of this kimono? Whenever the gods shall decree that our enemies shall be delivered into our hands. Oh, why don't you talk in United States, Chief? Why me getting slant-eyed now, man, you talk that way? Very well, my dear Magpie. As a matter of fact, it won't be long now. They fell for it hook, line, and sinker. Now, unless I miss my guess, we'll be headed back for San Francisco before very long. I'm ready. When do we leave? What's the matter? Getting lonesome for your sweetheart? Oh, no. Uh, 
No, she might be getting lonesome for me. <laughs> old Romeo Magpie, eh? Well, all I've got to do is figure out a way to get a hold of $100,000 in United States currency to pay for those gems tomorrow. And what do you want me to do? Well, you rustle together a bait of chop suey, will you? I'll rustle something and then it's going to be chop suey. You know the plan. We get the money, but we keep the diamonds. Just the four of us. What about Midge? I'll bring her with me. I'll get going. Where are they going? For a ride, I guess. Got a surprise for you, Midge. We're about to get rid of the diamonds. Oh, really? Who's going to buy them? The Chinaman. The Chinaman? Yeah. Come on, he's waiting for us. Men all set? Oh, that's swell. Now, you stay here. I'll ride in and see those fellas. Well, Chief, there's at least five of them in there. I know it, but they're not going to do anything to me when I tell them you've got the money. Well, suppose something does happen. <laughs> I don't think it will, but I can tell beforehand if I think it's going to get rough, I'll... Well, I'll get some kind of a signal to you. Now, if you want to see a first-class uh, Chinaman from San Francisco riding horse, as is done in China, you're watching me. Eat clap. How do you do, gentlemen and lady? Have you got the money? Oh, surely, but uh, not on my person. Oh, where is it? In the hands of my servant. Yeah? Where is he? Oh, he is not far away. But you do not think I would be so foolish as to carry the money on my person when the transaction has not yet been completed, did you? All right. Here's the sounds.
Uh, the night, I'm afraid, is very bad here. There may be in the shadow, the stone appears much better. How about it? Everything seems to be quite all right up to the present time, in as much as I have examined these few. You know, there is an expression that there is honor among thieves, but it is a statement which I am very often inclined to doubt. So in our profession, we always must be sure we are not receiving the double cross, and I really wish to assure myself that everything is, as you Americans say, on the up and up. Uh, if you would please standing over there, because there seems to be some interference with the light. Thank you very much. You guys want a jury? Here's a pair of bracelets for you. Get going or I'll blow your buttons off. feel better on your feet now. She all right, Chief? Yeah, she's all right. Just stunned a little bit. Hit her head on the rock, I guess. What'll I do with these fellas? Well, take them over and put them on the horses and we'll herd them into town. All right, get going. I suppose you want me too. Yes.
You ride down here about a half a mile. You'll come to the road that takes you to Randsburg. It's a narrow road, but it's straight. Take it. <laughs> 